Hi there! Okay, so in this video I'm going to do one example um, of uh, drawing a sine graph and I'm just going to take you through the steps that are very, very, very simple. Okay, so uh, let me quickly first just give you the steps that we are going to follow in drawing any trigonometric graph. The first thing we're going to do is find the center. Okay, find the center of the graph. Now, the center of the graph is um, the center line. So that's going to be the center line. The center line. And also the starting point. Okay, I'm going to call it the starting point. Starting point. In the second step, we are going to mark off the... Okay, we're going to mark off the period. Okay, the period. So once I know how uh, where to start, so once I have my starting position, I'm going to say, okay, well, if I start here, I must draw my graph. So if I mark off my period, it means I must end here with my cycle. And if I go backwards, then I have to end here. Okay, so I mark off my period in the second step in the third place or actually part of the second step let's keep it part of the second step mark of the period and divide and divide it into four into four pieces okay why into four pieces well here in halfway you can i didn't draw it very nicely but halfway i must co have completed my first uh what is this my first crest and in the second part I um, do my first trough okay that that's dividing it into half dividing each of those halves into halves again in other words now I've divided it into four at the first half I reach my maximum okay and at the second half I must be back in the as uh, sorry in the first quarter I reach my maximum in the uh, first half I reach back to my my center line in the third quarter I reach my minimum in the last quarter I get back to where I started so that is that is the whole idea here and I just do the same on the other side uh, divide it into four pieces and again you can see I didn't draw my graph very nicely because I didn't do this first okay when I do this first my graph would look much better so in the third place after I've done that I bound my graph. So I give my graph, it's bound my graph with the amplitude. Gra bound my graph with the amplitude. Okay, so that just means I'm going to say, okay, so this is the, um, the period in which I'm going to draw my graph, but I must also not go higher than this line or lower than that line okay so this is going to be this distance is going to be my period okay so that's the second part and finally the fourth thing is I'm going to determine my direction okay fourthly now let's choose a different color fourth place I'm going to determine direction Okay, what do I mean by determining direction? Well, it might be that your graph is actually reflected in the center line or it's reflected around its starting point. Okay, so I might have to go in this direction or I have to go uh, reflecting this in my uh, center point or maybe in my center line reflecting around here so I might have to go down first and then up well with all that in mind let's go have a look at this example that we have right here in this example if I want to first go and find my center line I find my center line by making what is inside here equal to zero so in other words x is equal to zero and if x is equal to zero then I get that sine of zero is zero plus one Okay, so my center is x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 1. Okay, so this is the coordinates for my center line. 0 for x and 1 for y, or my center. That's my center, 0 for x and 1 for y. 
and then I can draw in very lightly because it's not really part of my graph my center line so there's my center line that I can draw in okay the next thing that I uh, need to do I've got my center point or my starting point so my graph is either going to go up there like that and down there like that or maybe if it's reflecting it's going in that direction but okay the next thing we do is we mark off the period okay so the period for this one is simply um, 360 degrees divided by P where P is, or the absolute value of P where P is whatever is in front of this X whatever multiplying that X and there's nothing multiplying it so it means it's a 1 so my period is 360 which means I actually have to go on a little bit that my graph does not show me okay so 270 um, and then probably about three more 360 is more or less around here 360 and then I divide it into four okay so my second part is I divide it into four half of 360 is 180 so my graph is to go up and come down to this point okay then it goes down and then up if I go in the positive direction first okay the next point I need to do or the, the, I've just halved it now I need to divide it into four pieces the halving that as well gives me 90 that's where I must either reach my maximum or my minimum depending if I'm going up or down and halving this between 180 and 360 is another 180 180 divided by 2 is 90 so 180 plus that 90 here is half of the second part and here I'm either going to reach my maximum or my minimum again okay so there I have the next part I do is I bound my graph with the amplitude in other words I tell my graph whoa you're not allowed to go beyond this point or below that point and the uh, amplitude is given by whatever is multiplying the sign okay what's in front of the sign is nothing so it's not nothing it's actually a one okay so I may only move one unit higher or one unit lower so this is my upper boundary Okay, my top boundary, I may not go beyond that point, and I may not go beyond this point. So I may not go one unit higher than my center line, or uh, more than one unit lower than my center line. And there we go. The last part is simply to determine the direction and then draw the graph. So since what is in front of here is a, is a positive, in front of there is a positive, my uh, direction is the normal positive direction, which means... I'm going to go through that point, this point, come down here, and go back there, and in this direction, I am going to do exactly the same. I, 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 well, I'm just doing it in the negative direction. So at 90, I'm here at negative 180, I'm back there. And here I go, here I draw my graph in between. I'll first do it very lightly, okay, just to give me the idea. Okay, you can see why I sometimes miss it. There we go. Okay, let's go go through there. I can go up, turn there, through that point, up here, and we must stop at where 185. 185 would be here. There's my 185. Okay, 285, I mean. 285, smallest point is negative 180. And there we go. There's my graph of the sine function following these very simple steps that I can always follow no matter what the trigonometric function is. See you in the next video where we do another one of these examples.